Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a first impression swatch and demo on the new Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Eyeshadow Palette. This baby has been widely talked about on social media and there's no doubt as to why it is absolutely gorgeous. Please just excuse that shade there. We had a little bit of a problem towards the end of the video. The palette itself contains 18 shades. There are a range of matte and shimmers. There's a few duochrome shades and one pressed glitter shade as well, which unfortunately happens to be that one, but anyway, what can you do? The palette launches on Sephora.com and ShopHudaBeauty.com on September 18th. I'm unsure when it gets released on Sephora NZ as I do know they do tend to be a little bit behind, but if you are interested in picking up the palette on the day of its launch, you can definitely order from ShopHudaBeauty.com. They deliver internationally. I'm also unsure of the price of this palette. I can't find anything online, so I don't know if it's a secret or what. The previous Huda Beauty palette, which was the Rose Gold Edition, retails for a price of 65 USD. So I do think this would be very similar to that. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Of course, you have Huda Beauty on the front, and the Huda Beauty logo itself is actually quite raised. The eyes are also holographic, which I think is such a cool touch. And the eyeshadows themselves are very different to what I would generally reach for. But I think that this palette would definitely take you to that next level. I think the colors complement each other very well. They seem to work really well together. So I am very excited to put it to the test today for you guys. Also, I just want to put a quick disclaimer out there. Yes, this was sent to me as a PR package by the Huda Beauty team. But that in no way influences my judgment on today's video. And like all of these videos, I encourage you guys to do your own research, form your own opinion, and come to your own conclusion. Just because I may love or hate a product doesn't mean that it will be the exact same for you. So please just keep that in mind. And I guess with that being said, let's jump into the video. I am going to be doing both a finger and brush swatch so you guys can see the comparison. I'm using the same finger with the same amount of pressure and the same flat top eye brush for every swatch. Obviously ensuring I'm cleaning both my finger and brush properly before going in with the next eyeshadow. So the first thing I am going to do is just set my eye area in place using a transparent powder to help get rid of any excess oils. I don't use an eye primer anymore. I find that a powder works just as well. So what I'm going to do is just take that onto my upper lid and then I'm going to run a little bit of powder under my eye area as well. And this will just help catch any fallout. I'm just going to add quite a bit there actually and then I'll sweep it away once the eye look is complete. This is something I always do before going in with eyeshadow, so I'm not purposely trying to manipulate today's video. This is my everyday routine. I'm going to be taking a Morphe M505 blending brush, and let's begin with the color Musk. So I'm just gonna dip my blending brush into there, pick up a little bit of product. The first thing I do notice is there isn't a lot of kickback, which is a good thing. So hopefully there won't be a lot of fallout. I'm just going to tap the excess off and begin to blend that into my crease. Just blending back and forth from inner corner to outer corner. The colour so far seems very blendable. I'm not applying too much pressure on my brush. And it seems to be blending out pretty well. So, so far so good. It's quite pigmented as well. I didn't think I picked up a lot of product, but... I definitely don't need to go in with a second layer. I am very happy with that result. Wow, okay. Now using the same brush, I'm going to go and pick up the color Amber. And just doing the same as before, I'm just tapping into that eyeshadow, tapping off the excess, and blend 
exactly where we placed that first color so into the crease and blend back and forth wow okay pigmentation is definitely there wow it is really pigmented okay I am pretty dang impressed I'm gonna take a Sigma E30 pencil brush and go in with this brown shade called Odd? Oh my god, I can't even attempt to pronounce that. So what I'm going to do is just place that on the very, very outer corner of my eye. And just dab it in place. I'm going to try and avoid taking it any higher than the crease. Because now I'm going to go in with a Real Techniques eye blending brush. And blend that shadow into my crease. Okay, so I've just zoomed you guys in so you guys get a better idea of what the eyeshadow looks like. There is a little bit of fallout, but nothing too drastic. I feel like there's a little bit of patchiness where my crease lies, so I'm just going to take that pencil brush again and dip it into the brown shade, tap off the excess, to concentrate that shadow right where the patchiness is. And then again, just blend it out using a blending brush. Let's see how that does. And now I'm just going to flick the eyeshadow up slightly higher than my crease. To give a very, very semi cat eye effect. I am now going to go in with the shade Blood Moon. Yeah, that looks like a nice shimmery colour. So I'm going to be taking that on a flat top brush. Tap off the excess. Wow, okay, there was a little bit of fall out there. And just go ahead and apply it directly on my lid from inner corner to where it meets the outer corner matte shadows. And because it is a shimmery shade, I am pressing the pigment into place. You don't want to rub because that could produce fallout and it will lose pigmentation. Okay, so that was one layer. So now I'm going in with my second layer. And I'm just going to take it up towards my crease. I'm now going to go in with my Real Techniques eye blending brush with no additional product. And just blend the sudden stop between the matte and the shimmery shade so there are no harsh lines. For the inner corner, I'm going in with the shade Celestial, and I'm just going to take that on a small flat top eye brush by Zoeva. It's a very small brush, so it's perfect for the inner corner and the brow bone. And just go ahead and apply that in the inner corner. This is actually a duochrome shade as well, which I didn't realize until I applied it. It isn't as pigmented as the shade I applied on my lid, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but... Because it's on the inner corner, it doesn't matter too much. I'm just going to wipe off that brush on a paper towel. And then I'm going to go in with the shade Desert Sand for my brow bone. I don't think this shade is anything too fancy. It's just an ordinary matte shade. It's like an orangey cream colour. But the colour definitely doesn't transfer like that onto the skin. It's more of just a neutral shade. So I think it would be great to work as a base for the rest of your eyeshadows or in my case I'm using it as a brow bone colour which I think works well too. So this is what the eye look looks like so far. I am going to begin to sweep away the fallout and let's just see how that goes. Hopefully we don't have too much drama doing this. So the eyeshadow seemed to sweep away pretty easily. I just have this small area here where it looks to me like the eyeshadow has actually gotten in my base. It's a bit hard to see in the sliding, but because I'm more up close and personal, it's really bugging me. I feel like if I purposely hadn't gone in with the powder under my eyes, then the eyeshadow fallout could be an absolute bitch to work with because it would just get caught up and it would just ruin your under eye area completely. I would maybe recommend doing your eyes first before the rest of your base. I applied a shit ton of powder under my under eye area because I had no idea what these eyeshadows would be like in terms of fallout. So I just, I came prepared, but my eye area does tend to dry up a bit. I can already feel like the powder is just not helping whatsoever. So for me personally, I don't want to have to apply a whole bunch of powder under my under eye area to catch fallout. So I am going to go and apply eyeshadow 
on this eye. I am gonna extra tap off the excess to see what the fallout is like there. But as of my thoughts right now, I would definitely start with my eyes first. All right, let's go in and do the other eye. So again, I'm doing the exact same process, taking the shade Musk on a Morphe M505 blending brush. Let's really tap off that excess. And I am just going to blend into my crease again from inner corner to outer corner. Oh, okay, I may have over tapped that brush because the product doesn't seem to be as pigmented transferring to my skin as it was on the other eye. Let's go in with the shade Amber. Oh, I'm scared to do heavy tapping now because the product might not be as good. Okay, not bad. This colour seems to be transferring a lot better than the first colour. I do think the extra tapping definitely helps with fallout. There's no fallout yet. Yes, okay. And taking that pencil brush again and going in with that one shade I cannot pronounce. I am going to apply that on my outer corner. I can tell that the shades aren't as pigmented as it was on the other eye, but that's okay. I prefer to go in with a few layers if I have to then to go in with one good layer and you get a lot of fallout. I still definitely stand by the fact that the colours are very easy to blend and the colours work well together. That I think speaks for itself on camera. I mean you guys can see, well hopefully you guys get a good idea of how much pressure I am applying and it's not much at all. I'm then going to return to that big fluffy brush by Morphe and just blend out the edges. I'm now going to go in with that flat top eye brush again and take the shade Blood Moon. Oh, I don't want to tap too much off because I feel like we're going to lose a lot of the pigment. Okay, just do that many. Oh, okay. I can already see there's not as much pigment on the brush. Still applies pretty good. I just feel like I am going to have to go in with multiple layers for this shade. And just returning to that Real Techniques blending brush, I'm just going to blend the matte shade in with the shimmer so there's no harsh line. That shimmery shade still produced hella fallout. So hopefully, hopefully when I sweep it away, it isn't going to get caught up in my face. Hopefully. Okay, let's do this. Caught up a little bit around my nose area just over there but it doesn't seem to be as bad as the other side so that's good I'm now quickly gonna apply the shade Celestial in my inner corner all right and wipe that brush clean and then lastly I'm gonna go in with the shade Desert Sand and apply that on my brow bone and let's work some shadows into the lower lash line. So I'm taking a Luxie Flat Definer Eye Brush. And I'm going in with that shade I cannot for the life of me pronounce. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply that on my lower lash line. I do also apologize for the lighting. I know it's all over the place. I am honestly such a noob when it comes to this type of stuff. I don't even know where to start. And... No matter how many tutorials I watch on YouTube, I still don't understand it. So I am working on it. It just might take some time. So please bear with me. I am then going to go in with a smaller blending brush. This one is the Luxie Tempered Blending. Tapered Blending? Tempered. What am I on? And I am going to go in with the shade Amber and Saffron. Just combine those two together and blend that into my lower lash line. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some liner and lashes. You guys know I cannot live without my falsies. And I'll be back to give you guys my final thoughts. That is the eye look complete. Overall, I really like this palette. I definitely recommend it. I think the colors work well together. They complement each other very nicely. The eyeshadows themselves are very blendable. So, so creamy. And they are packed with pigmentation. I did have that slight hiccup with the amount of fallout from that one shimmery shade. 
but let's be honest what shimmery shade doesn't produce some sort of fallout it's just one of those things and there are definitely ways to get about it i think this palette isn't your everyday typical neutrals palette i think it definitely would in some way encourage you to step out of your comfort zone just because the colors are just oh shit oh my god <laughs> fuck so the shade cosmo the glitter shade just completely fell out all over my legs i look like a glitter ball right now when i did receive this package the shade cosmo was broken it obviously got broken during transportation and i did press it back into place and i thought i did a pretty good job but clearly not because this just happened damn it oh, oh my god that sucks there's still a little bit of product left in the pan not a hell of a lot but to be honest it's not really a shade i would reach for a lot anyway it's just crap that has happened and i don't quite know how i'm gonna get up because i'm sitting on carpet anyway that's it from me i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more from me have a good day and i'll talk to you guys next time